We're considering the phenomenal, and it's really amazing, the blessings that God has supplied, the potential that is supplied for every one of us. I've thought about this many times, how God has already got in store the things that every one of us are needing. You know, God is so powerful and genius, all-knowing, that he doesn't have to wait until we ask to have the provision that we are needing. Isn't that awesome? That he already has it ready and he's waiting on us to ask. You see, he is the almighty God. Our God, the God that you are serving, he is the creator of all things. When I say don't forsake the fountain, I'm saying don't forsake the God who is the source of everything that you are needing. You see, he is the one who satisfies the hunger, the longings of our soul. Without him, we would, every one of us, be bankrupt. Every one of us, spiritually, physically, even financially, we depend upon the Lord. Psalms chapter 8 and verse 1 through verse 9 gives us an insight into the Lord God, the creator and the supplier of our need. It says, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? Yet, you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings. You've made mankind a little lower than the angels and crowned mankind with glory and honor. You've given him dominion over the works of your hands and you have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, also the beast of the field, the birds of the heaven and the fish of the sea. Whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Consider what God has done when he called us, you, into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Psalms 8 shows us that God Almighty is the fountain, the source of all things. In being the source of all things, God is amazing. When David considered this, he's implying God has never been overwhelmed at the things that he has created. Right. Uh, the power of his majesty, his being, who he is, his, his sovereign, omnipotent power and being. Our God is so powerful. Think about it. Reflect back to Genesis chapter one, that God spoke these things into existence. That's the kind of power and God that we serve. Then David makes this statement. He's looking at the God, the creation, and he says, what is man that you are mindful of him? You know, when you consider everything that God has done, I, I think sometimes we're sort of like an ant. I mean, have you ever stepped on an ant? How many? You know, you can step on an ant bed and, and annihilate a hundred of them and not even know it. And I think about God, the creator of all things and the universe and all of the planets and stars. And when I consider all that God has done, what is man that God is mindful of him that he would even consider us? And yet God has done something that is so phenomenal. He has raised mankind, you are included in this, to such a position that God has put us in dominion over the rest of his creation. You know, it's amazing what God has done when he considered us. Every work of God's hands have been placed under man's control. 
When I think about that, it's just overwhelming that God would consider us. God has so highly exalted us. But here's the problem that has arisen in many people. Because we have so much authority and we can do so many things, there's a lot of people that have said, who needs God? And the reason is we have so much power and so much influence and we can do so many things and we can create so many things and we have so much influence over everything that we look around and we begin thinking within ourselves. Maybe you have it, but there's a lot of people that do it and they, they start saying, who needs a God? After all, look what I can do. Look at the works of my hands. Look at the, the power and the authority that I have. Have you noticed, maybe you know someone who doesn't even consider God in their life. I've known many of them. Listen to the word that God spoke to Jeremiah about this. Jeremiah chapter two and verse 13. God is speaking to Israel through Jeremiah and he says for my people have committed two evils they have forsaken me the fountain of living waters and hewn them out cisterns broken cisterns that can hold no, no water what is he saying the fountain of living waters is the Lord God Almighty everything finds its origin and its strength in the Lord God Almighty and God sent this message don't forsake the fountain of living waters you need to realize who is the source of your life. I, I would encourage you every morning, get up when you get out of bed. If you're one of those people that work at night, whenever you get out of bed, if it's in the morning or if it's at the evening, when you get out of bed and put your feet on the floor, you need to say, thank you, God. First of all, that I still have existence. Thank you, God, that I had some rest last night. Thank you, God, my heart's still beating. Thank you, God, that there is a source of life that is that is supplying strength and sustenance for me. Every time you sit down at the table, you ought to offer thanks to the Lord God Almighty. God was telling Jeremiah. My people have looked for other sources. Something else that. They're saying this is the sustenance. This is the source of our strength in life. I, I see this going on in our world, world right now. There are so many people that have forsaken the Lord God Almighty. In fact, I have found it interesting. In, in the last week, I have on my news apps, on my phone, I have received multiple pieces of news that are talking about people in the United States who have forsaken Christianity, who have forsaken God, who have said it is not necessary for us to have God in our lives. The percentages are growing. People are turning away from the Lord. And I, I wonder where is it they're turning? And according to Jeremiah, they're turning to broken cisterns, something that really is not a source of life and strength. I believe that the initial fulfillment of this prophecy was in Jeremiah's day. But I see it also as an end time prophecy of things that are happening right now when many people are turning away from the Lord God Almighty. Do you know people in your corner of the world who say, I really don't need God? I really don't need him. I'm making it fine without God in my life. I, I've, I've noticed in the statistics are there. I just don't like to bring up all of the numbers. They're sort of confusing to people. But there are a lot of people who have forsaken church. They say it's not necessary in my life. I can make it without it. I don't, I don't need it. In Jeremiah's day, they had been going to the temple to worship God. And when they went to the temple, the temple was the, the one place of all places that they would go that they would find the presence of God. 
I still remember the time when Jer when Solomon had finished the building of the temple and the glory of the Lord came down and the people could not even enter into the temple because the glory of God was there. That's what it was. And uh, in that time, Solomon prayed a prayer and he said, God, every time your people turn their faces toward this place, let them know that you are hearing from heaven and that you will answer their prayer. Hallelujah. Although they had in the past gone to the temple to worship, they also at the same time built high, high places to sacrifice to the Baals, to Shemos, to Molech, and wooden and carved images. I know it's very disturbing if you really understand what that is saying, because especially Chemosh or Shemos and Molech required human sacrifice and you think about that that they turned from the living God the source of life to something that was the source of death it is amazing to me how people and it wasn't just people that had no knowledge it was the priests and it was the rulers and the prophets and the people who were turning from the Lord their God it is a it is a disturbing image in our mind that they would turn from a living God to carved images and they would bow down and worship them as though they were alive friends we are serving a living God he is a mighty God God is telling Jeremiah here there is a fountain of living waters there is a source of life could I tell you this morning that the Lord your God is the living fountain of waters? I want you to listen to the Lord Jesus Christ in John chapter 4 and verse 14. Jesus said, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. The Lord promised a constant supply of supernatural and satisfying water. He's not talking about something you drink. He's talking about the source of life and strength that you need in your life. Yes, amen. I believe every one of you, maybe you have trouble with this. And if so, I want to give some clarity to you. Maybe you're thinking, well, what has God done for me? I want to tell you, the Lord your God has done some awesome things for you. Yes, he has. There are some people that have this testimony. He woke me up this morning and he started me on my way. Have you ever heard that? That's the God that we're serving. He still supplies for us. We've tasted and we have seen that the Lord has good is, is good. We, we know what he has done. When Jesus went to the woman who was at the well, she had been going to a well that had not really satisfied the longing of her soul. But Jesus told her that he would give her water that she would not have to come back to the sources she had been going to before, but it would be within her a fountain of living water that springs up into everlasting life. And she said, Lord, give me that water. Hallelujah. What does this mean in practical terms? Because I, I, I'm a practical person. Person, I need something that really works. What God starts in us does not find an end. Do you remember the joy that came into your heart when you accepted Jesus as your Savior? I'm here to tell you this morning that that joy does not find an end. The, the, the joy and the fullness that comes when the Holy Spirit comes into your heart, it does not end. There's not an end to his blessing. There's not an end to his favor. There's not an end to his supply. This is the God that we are serving. This fountain continues springing up into everlasting life. John 7 verse 37, it says on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, if anyone thirst, let me ask you today, are you thirsty? 
If anyone thirsts, let him come to me. Let him come to Jesus and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living waters. I, I was thinking about that and it brought a memory to me of the big spring in Missouri. It's the largest spring in the world. It produces 407 cubic feet of crystal clear water every second. Whew. Out of your innermost being shall flow living water. Rivers of living water. Uh, not just a river, but rivers and not just water, but something that is alive. I'm telling you this morning that God has supplied for you something that will satisfy the hunger and the need in your life. Don't go looking for something else because the Lord your God is, is available to help you in your time of need. Jesus is giving us a, a key to an overflowing and abundant life. He said, come to me and drink. I, 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 can I say that a different way? I don't want to do any disservice to what the Lord said. But come to me and you will find what you're needing. Come to me and you will find healing. Come to me and you will find salvation. Come to me and you will find protection. Come to me and you will find what it is you're needing in your life. Uh, where could I go but to the Lord? See, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Did you know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? Yes. That God is in you, lives in you. You know, that's important. And what he has done in you should never come to an end. If you're growing stagnant, it's not because God has abandoned you. Because God has made this promise that when he comes in, it's going to be like rivers of living water that just keep springing up inside of you. Again, I think about that spring in Missouri, and I must tell you, that's the image that I have of the Holy Spirit and of God inside of you. He's always present. He's a very present God. And when he's present, he's present in all of his power, in all of his mind, in all of his knowledge, in all of his wisdom. There are many biblical images of this. The book of Revelation shows us a river that flows out of the throne of God. Chapter 21, it says, chapter 22. He showed me a pure river of water, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb, verse two. In the middle of the street and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore 12 fruits, fruits each tree yielding its fruit every month. I think there's an image there that when the river flows, the fruit never dies. Let me say that again. Some of you didn't get it. When the river flows, the fruit never dies. If the river's flowing through you, the fruit never dies. Hallelujah. Think about what that means in your life. John is witnessing the fulfillment Fulfillment, the completed fulfillment of what we have been looking at. He says that this thing that is started in you is going to just continue to grow. In fact, I see something that's happening here that the ultimate end of it is when Christ comes back to this earth and the world is healed. There's going to be that time. But right now in us as individual believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, God has called you into the fellowship of his son. And in this fellowship, there is a river of life that is flowing in you. If you're out of strength, you need the river to flow. If you're, if you're needing healing, you need the river to flow. If you are, are discouraged, you need the river to flow. If, you, if you're going through trials and tests, you need the river to flow. He will 
will come to you with the strength and the fruit that you're needing in your life. See, when we stand before the throne of God and of the Lamb, we will witness the full magnitude and manifestation of what is started within us. Some, sometimes we get the image that what's happening in me is just really pretty minor. Maybe you don't feel God moving with all of that force. I, I know when I, we lived in Missouri, there are multiple rivers. Most of them, you cannot see the water move. In fact, it looks like a lake. It's just calm, but you get down into it. There's a force. I, I, I want you to understand what you're seeing on the surface is not what's happening underneath. There is a force of God that is moving down here that's working in you. And God says, I'm not finished. Ezekiel saw this same river of living water flowing from the temple of God. Ezekiel 47 and 1, he says, Then he brought me back to the door of the temple, and there was water flowing from under the threshold of the temple toward the east. For the, for the front of the temple faced east, and the water was flowing from under the right side of the temple south of the altar. That brought back a, an image of what we studied in Bible study on Wednesday night, not long ago, the Eastern Gate, the Golden Gate. There's going to come this time when the new temple is going to be constructed. Hallelujah. And God is going to set up his throne on this earth. That, that time is coming. We're, we're looking forward to that manifestation. But there's something that the Lord is saying that I believe reaches to where we're living right now. Do you not know that you are the temple of God? And if you are the temple of God, there is something that God has done. I know the imagery may be hard for some people to understand, but God has put a river inside of you. It's a river of divine supply. And, and God is saying, if you, if you will not forsake me, I will never forsake you. Jesus is really referring to a, a fountain, an overflowing of the Holy Spirit that is down inside of us. And as we fellowship with God's Son, the same Spirit that was upon Him should begin flowing out of our innermost being. That same Spirit that produced all those powerful works, that same power is working within you. Jesus is indicating that there is a relationship with God the Father that continually increases and it never runs dry. I thought about that spring in Missouri and that it has done that every day, every second, and it has not run dry. It just amazes me. Even in drought, it still flows. Do you get the message. There's something in you that does not stop. It does not stop flowing. And God is saying, I, I don't want what I have started in you to ever diminish, to ever die down. There is a fountain of living water that is flowing in you. Revelation 7 and verse 17 says, For the Lamb of God who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Isn't it interesting that we have looked many times that God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, but there's also a connection with this outflow, this flowing out of God's presence and power, this fellowship with God, this fellowship with what is in the throne of God coming down to the people of God. The lamb who's in the midst will draw See, this is what God is wanting to do right now. He's wanting to draw you to fountains, living fountains of water. And when you, when you realize this, there's some dramatic change that's going to happen in you, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. 
I want to ask you a question. Where is Jesus? Do you believe that he's on the throne? Do you believe that he's doing what he said he would do? I believe it with all of my heart. And if he's doing that, we should be rejoicing in the fountain of living waters that he's sending to us. Yes, amen. Because I don't believe the Lord lies. I believe the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, is in the midst of the throne of God. And he's drawing God's people to this place where they can have fullness in their heart and in their life. Hallelujah. But... God's people must not forsake the fountain. Those words that were spoken to Jeremiah just sent shockwaves into my mind and my spirit that it's even possible. And yet I have looked around and I have observed and I know there are many who have forsaken God. I could speak of many Circumstances, because there are many of them, pastors and church leaders who have fallen into deep sin. Maybe you have known some brothers or sisters or people who have attended church with you who have forsaken God. And I say within my heart, Lord, how can this be? When there is something that is so vital and alive that that has been given to us that reaches down to the very core of what it is we're needing in our life. That it's so personal and so real that out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. And he's speaking of the Holy Spirit's presence in your life. Yes. John chapter 7 and verse 38. Jesus said, he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart, Another translation says out of his innermost being. So he's talking about down in here. Will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the spirit whom those who believe in him would receive. See, God has called you into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ. And when he called you into this fellowship, he expected to fill you with fountains of living water. I'm sure, I'm certain, if you have been saved, you have felt that fountain. Could I have a witness this morning? But you see, what started should never end. That fountain should be active right now. Maybe you're in one of those moments in your life where you're looking at it and you're saying, I don't see anything happening. I don't feel any movement at all. I ask you instead of saying, well, since I'm not feeling anything right now and I, I don't recognize any movement right now, I, I'm going to just forsake it and go and look for something else that will help me through my... No, dig deep. Because you're going to find that the Lord has not forsaken his people, that the Lord has not walked out on you, that he is still there. Hallelujah. That he is still mighty, that he is still almighty. The very God that created the universe is working inside of you. That very power that raises the dead is working inside of you. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. That fountain should never dry up. 